Question three, only 42% of our kindergartners are coming to school ready to learn on day one. The rate of readiness is half that in schools of concentrated poverty. What are your thoughts on the role of early childhood education and expanding programs such as the Camp K pilot that will support 300 rising kindergartners this summer in getting foundational skills to be successful in school? Well, <laughs> I mean, I think anybody that uh, is, I mean, am I on or go off again? It's only on for me, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'll, I'll try to speak loud. Can everybody hear me? Yeah. I think everybody that cares about education certainly cares about early childhood education. And, and uh, I too, as you just mentioned, and uh, especially excited about what Chattanooga 2.0 is going to do with regard to their Camp K, and it has a component in that Camp K that I think is critical. And that being that for those kids to participate in that Camp K, the parents got to participate too. You know what's sad, and I see it all the time, is that a lot of young people today, especially young people who, who are maybe in some of our failing schools, seemingly don't value education. That's a sad thought. Well, why is that? It's because the adults in their lives hadn't valued education. We've got to do better with that. You know, education is from the womb to the grave. I'm 65. Somebody say, you don't look at old Joe. I'm 65, and I learn something every single day. In education, womb to the grave. And we've got to start these kids when they're infants. We've got to start them when they're infants. And the parent, it starts with the parent. I tell kids all the time, my kids will tell you, be better than me. Be better than me. You ever heard me say that, guys? <laughs> all the time. Be better than me. Listen, I would love for us to be able to provide uh, preschool, pre-K, for every child in Hamilton County. Wouldn't that be wonderful? Let me tell you, that's going to come with a huge, huge price tag. So I'm confident that uh, Dr. Johnson will continue to look at state and federal grants, trying to figure out funding. And then if he thinks that we need to go to the taxpayers and ask for more money for that, he'll come to us and let us know, and then we'll have that conversation. Okay. So I do believe that this, with statistics like that, is a significant problem in our county. Um, prevention is something that is key early childhood education is something that if we're focusing on um, on kindergarten readiness then we're getting our children off to a great start so it's very important the thing that I want to keep in mind and Joe made mention to this he put the um, he put everything on the parents that the parents have uh, the responsibility in in the education of their children I would say that if we started to look at life, if we started to look at the situations, look at the person next to you and realize that uh, we need to keep in mind that the re your reality is not the reality of the person sitting next to you. We have some parents who um, are working two or three jobs. They don't have the ability to read to their children at night. They may not be home by the time their little one goes to bed. We have some children who are going home and they're the only, only person in their home who speaks English. We have other children who go home to grandparents who can't read. So having the expectation that um, we have to have the same solution for all children, we have to come together. We have to come together as a community thinking like a community to come, to come up with answers and solutions that involve um, all of our beautiful families that exist here in Hamilton County. Um, so that's something that when we have statistics like that, when we come up with solutions, we have to keep those things in mind. Thank you. Let me, let me just correct one thing, because I, I, I think I heard you say that Mr. Smith said that education of, of the children is all on the parents. That's not what I said. What I said was that education begins with the parent and then the home. So I just want to clarify that. So what, what I wrote down that you said is that adults don't value education and children don't value education. And that 
is not the reality for all adults is my point. That there are a lot of families, a lot of parents out there who do value education, but their situation is built on survival or their situation is built on I'm a single parent and I don't have the ability to uh, to cater to my child's needs because I have to keep a roof over their head and I have to keep food on the table. So when we come up with a solution, it has to be a wraparound support of our children and our parents and our community coming together as a whole to come up with what works best for everyone, all of our children, not just the ones who have the access to the resources, but those who don't as well.